Hey, what is up guys? This is Cash Freak Tim from CashFreak.com and today we're talking about GSAC, the Geocaching Swiss Army Knife. This is part 5 of our multi-part tutorial series talking about GSAC. If you're just joining us so far, we've covered the basics. We've talked about how to import pocket queries into GSAC. We've talked about how to filter your geocaches and we've talked about how to get those geocaches onto your GPS. If you missed any of the earlier tutorials, feel free to go back and check them out. You can find them on YouTube. You can also find them on my site, cashfreak.com. If you have any comments or questions about them, feel free to leave those in the comments section. But today, we're going to talk about customizing and personalizing GSAC a little bit. So let's get started. Now, one of the things that I brought up in the very first tutorial was talking about locations. And one of the first things I showed you how to do was to go through and how to add your home location. So whenever you sorted your list of geocaches, it knew how far away you lived from each geocache. Now, there are many reasons you might want to add additional locations. You know, let's say maybe you're going on a camping trip and you don't want to sort the caches by the distance from your house. No, you want to sort them by the distance of the camping ground. Maybe you're going to visit some friends for the weekend. You want to put their location in so you can tell GSAC how far away from their location each geocache is going to be. So we went through in the first tutorial we added our home location. I'm going to go through it one more time. I'm going to show you how to add additional locations and what that will do for you. Now to add additional locations, what you're going to do is you're going to go up to the tools menu. You're going to go to options. You're going to go to the locations tab. Now as you can see, I already have one location in here, which is my home. And let's say I want to add additional location. For example, this weekend I'm going to be going downtown to an Indians game, a Cleveland Indians game and I want to do some geocaching while I'm down there. So what I want to do is I want to sort my geocaches by the distance from Progressive Field where the Indians play. So I'm going to add a location for Progressive Field in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in, I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it Progressive Field. And then you have to add a comma after the name and a space. Now from this point you need to type in the coordinates and there's really two ways to get the coordinates. One is by using your GPS. If you happen to be at the location for where you're going to be adding your location coordinates in here for, you can just go outside and take a reading. Any modern GPS is going to have this capability. Even driving GPS's will give you your coordinates. So you can just take a reading with your GPS and type in the number in here. If you don't happen to be at the location for the coordinates you're typing in, like right now, I'm not downtown at Progressive Field, I'm at home. So I need a way of finding out what those coordinates are. And probably the easiest way I've found of doing this is by using this website right here. It's called findlatitudeandlongitude.com. And what it does is it allows you to look up any location using Google Maps, and it'll give you the exact coordinates for that location. So let me give you an example. I'm going to zoom in here on Cleveland. And I'm going to look for a progressive field, which is right here. I'm just going to click it. And there it is. That's all you have to do. It's that simple. It's going to give me the latitude and longitude. Now, from this point, all you have to do is copy and paste it into GSAC. So I am going to copy my latitude. I'm going to paste it in there. And the only extra thing you have to do here is you have to get rid of the quotation marks and you have to get rid of the degree symbol. Everything else can stay the way it is. Then I'm going to go back and I'm going to get my longitude. Again, just going to copy and paste it. Copy. paste and again we're going to get rid of quotations and we're going to get rid of the degree symbol and there we go I've got my name comma then the exact coordinates for my location I'm going to go ahead and hit OK and now under locations we have two entries we've got home and we've got progressive field so right now we're sorted by home. It's going to show me the geocaches within distance from my house. But now I'm going to switch it over to progressive field. 
and it's going to show me the geocaches that are downtown near Progressive Field. You can add as many locations as you want. I find it very handy to add in any time I'm going on vacation, camping, hiking, you know, going away for a couple days, to add in the coordinates for the location I'm going to be. It makes it much simpler to sort your geocaches by distance from where you're going to be and send them to your GPS. Another quick tip I'm going to show you. As I kind of mentioned also in the first tutorial, GSAC divides the screen in half by default. Top half is the list of your geocaches, and the bottom half is actually the geocache you have selected at the time. Now, some people like this, some people don't. Uh, sometimes you just want to see your list of geocaches. So what I find it helpful to do is you can hide the split screen. You can do it one of two ways. You can go up here to View and uncheck Split Screen. And there we go, it makes a full list of geocaches. Or you can also just hit F2 on your keyboard. So F2 shows it and hides it. It's a very handy little trick. Now let's talk about views. So whenever you're looking at your list of geocaches, you can see all these headings up top. You can see how far away, based by distance, who placed the cache, when it was last found. All this information shows up here at the top of GSAC by default. Well, maybe you want to change this information around. Uh, let's say maybe you find it easier, you want to have your last found category over here. All you have to do is drag it and drop it. It's very simple. You can move any column to any location. So maybe I want my did not find to be over here. All I have to do is drag and drop. Very, very simple. One of the other nice features about GSAC is you can add and remove these column headings. So maybe I don't need the did not find date listed here. I don't want it to take up any space. I can go in there and remove it. Maybe I want to add a couple additional column headings. So it's very simple to do. What you're going to do to do that is you are going to go up to view and you're going to go to add remove columns. And this will bring up the list. It'll show you all the different column headings. Obviously the ones that are checked are the ones that show up and the ones that are not checked don't show up. Now you can go through here, you can add and remove column headings to however you'd like it displayed. You know, before we talked about I maybe I don't want the did not find date and did not find status to show up. So I'm going to uncheck those and I'm just going to hit OK takes a couple seconds to refresh and then they're gone. That did not find is no longer listed as a column heading. Let's go back in there. Now I'm a big fan of simplicity. I like a very basic list of columns. You know, I find it much more productive if I can just have a couple columns. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go in here and I am going to have it just display the GC code. I want it to give me the waypoint name. I want it to give me the distance. And I think I'm going to also add the container. So I just have those few things. I'm going to hit OK. And as you can see, there we go. It gives me a very easy to view basic list of just those column headings that I want to see. Now you're probably wondering, do I have to do this every time I want to change my views if I want to add or remove something? Do I have to go in there and do that and uncheck those boxes every time? The answer is no. You can save your view so you can just very easily switch between them. Let me show you how that works. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go up here to view. I'm going to go to save current view and you're gonna give it a name this one I'm just gonna call basic and I'm gonna hit OK so now I've saved just these four column headings under the view name basic and as you can see over here this is your list of views right now we're on basic we can hop back to that default view we were looking at just a minute ago and go back to basic and you can create as many of these views as you want. So I can go in here, and maybe I want one that gives me everything. So I'm going to check all. I'm going to hit OK. 
and look at that it gives me every single column heading you know every piece of information you'd ever want to know about a geocache and I'm gonna save this one as well I'm gonna go in here to view save current view and I'm gonna call this one all and hit OK so now I've got three different views I've got my all I've got my basic and I've got my default so as you can see GSAC is extremely customizable it's very easy to use uh, and it, it just it lets you set it up the way you want things to look it's, I, I love the way GSAC works it takes a little bit of work up front to get it the way you want but once everything's said and done it's much easier to use last couple things I'm going to show you today are some additional options you can change and you can get to your options by going to tools and options and there's a whole bunch of changes you can make throughout these tabs but a couple quick ones I'm going to show you for example the default action for when you double click a waypoint or a geocache what does it do by default when I double click a geocache it just opens up the information in a web browser maybe I don't want it to do that so I'm gonna go into tools options and you have this big list of options for what you want GSAC to do when you double click a geocache for example I'm gonna change it to MapQuest so now when I double click a geocache it's going to open up in MapQuest so I'm gonna double click the geocache again and there it goes it's gonna go ahead and it's gonna open up in MapQuest another option that I really like to use a lot is colors colors make finding out what geocaches you have visited you've placed you have found very simple to do just by looking at the screen so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna change some of these colors around so maybe I want my unavailable and archive caches to be red maybe I want all the geocaches that I've placed to be lime I want the geocaches I found use this blue color here and I want the geocaches I have not found to be yellow you can also have GSAC show you the different colors for whenever you select a geocache you want to be sent to your GPS so I'm gonna go ahead and change that as well and I think I'm gonna change that to orange I'm gonna hit OK and I'm, I'm gonna hit OK again and as you can see all the geocaches now are different colors you know we can go through here and we can be certain that the yellow geocaches are ones I have not visited the red ones are ones that are no longer available blues are ones that I've already found and just makes it very simple to view geocaches based by color so I can as you remember I also change the color for geocaches I want to select to send to my GPS so I'm gonna go through I'm gonna select a few geocaches as you can see it turns them orange again this is a hundred percent customizable you can go in here and you can change these colors to anything you want so that's all we're gonna cover today again in the future we're gonna be going over more customization more personalization we're gonna be covering macro shortly so stay with us if you have any comments any questions feel free to leave them in the comments section uh, check out my website cashfreak.com and I will see you guys later